And as Aaron has already alluded to, there are people who specialize in rewriting history. Okay, so I already knew that. Um, but as I began to get into biblical prophecy, I'm like, well, wait a minute. Um, Noah had a prophetic word. Abram had a prophetic word. All of these, in, I'm talking about true prophecy now. I'm not talking about, <laughs> I'm not talking about, yea, verily the Lord thy God would say unto you today. I'm not talking <laughs> about that kind of prophecy. I'm talking about actual biblical prophecy that is recorded in the scripture inspired by the prophets. Okay, so biblical prophecy, but the second piece would be DNA. Hello, I'm Patrick Brown with Scripture versus Scripture, and today we got a treat for you. Joining me today in this discussion, we have Brother Darrell Williams, and we have Brother Aaron Robinson. Darrell Williams is with Emergent Ministries, and I'm pretty sure you know a lot about him and his good works that he's been doing. Uh, Brother Aaron, we already have a uh, interview that we did with him before. It was very uh, informative, and if you are a uh, subscriber to my channel, please go back and look at that. I'm sure you'll be blessed. Today, <clears throat> we're going to be talking about a subject that I'm sure many of you have uh, contemplated and kicked around. It's uh, becoming more and more of a uh, thing in America today uh, with a group called the Black Hebrew Israelites, the subject we're gonna talk about. Now, before I get started, I'm gonna make it plain to everyone that none of the gentlemen today <laughs> on <laughs> this screen that, that are gonna be discussing this uh, topic are uh, part of the uh, organization or the religious uh, uh, sect called the uh, Hebrew Israelite. However, <clears throat> as we get into this, uh, this uh, discussion, you probably hear some things that may or may not be similar, but I'm going to let them describe and, uh, their points for themselves. Now, <clears throat> uh, before we do anything, uh, we are going to let the Lord Jesus lead us and guide us because that is the only way we can be spiritually led to the truth. So uh, if you would, Brother Aaron, could you uh, give us a little prayer and get us kicked off here? <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father God, we come before you now. We give you praise, honor, and glory for this opportunity that you've given us to share, to sharpen. We thank you, Lord God, that you've led us to this point up, up until now. So we ask you to continue to lead us even in this conversation. Holy Spirit, have your way. Allow our words to be seasoned so that the hearers may hear and hear life and gain wisdom. And it will begin to cause them to search out your word. We pray that nothing that we say will be divisive, but it will be informative for the purpose of planting seed and or watering seed. And we trust according to your word that you'll give the increase. We invite your presence in to have your way now. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Glory. Whole name. All right. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and make it uh, plain to everyone what the subject matter is. And we're going to be talking about today, who is the true Israel? Who is the true Israel? All right. Um, it's going to be a pretty open conversation here. And I'm just going to go ahead and start off with uh, Brother Darrell. Daryl, could you just tell us what started your research? What did you read, see, or hear that made you question who is the true Israel? Yes, well, thank you, uh, Brother Pat, for the opportunity to share. Nice, nice to be with Brother Aaron. Um, I, I, I think my my venture into this this uh, this particular frame of reference um, has been ongoing over the years since I've been saved. Um, mm -hmm. as many people may know, when I was originally saved, I was saved, um, within the seven day Adventist, uh, organization. So there, there were some things naturally that I understood was different, um, regarding what we traditionally held, um, as Christianity and some things scripture, uh, spoke about, you know, primarily, I, I guess it would be the issue of Sabbath. Um, so as, as I continued my journey, um, on through seminary, um, dealing with, um, I'm primarily out of a Pentecostal charismatic background. 
Um, there were just a number of different things that I saw that, well, scripture seems to deal with these things, but within what I like to call cultural Christianity or institutional uh, Christianity, they just simply weren't dealt with. Um, in the 70s, I came across a couple of books that dealt with the, the Black presence in the Bible. Um, so I had already had somewhat of a foundation regarding um, the way Christianity was presented. And I began to discover that, strangely, certain people don't seem to have been involved in the book. Um, though the biblical narrative itself seems to take place in a part of the world where the majority of the people were people of color. Um, and so as I continue to study, as I continue to research, um, I would say probably three to four years ago, I really began to look into this issue um, regarding Israel <coughs> as a whole. Um, and so out of that, my own understanding began to somewhat expand regarding um, the characters. I'll, I'll use that word, the characters that are actually being talked about within the context of the scripture. Um, and so I will leave it at that for the moment, um, if that answers your question, and because I'm sure as we go through in dialogue, some of these other dots will begin to be connected in terms of how I arrived at the reality that Israel as a whole um, were people of color. And I'll, I'll kind of stop there and then we'll come back and revisit some, some areas. Hopefully I answered your question. Yeah, yes, you did. Uh, Brother Aaron, what about the, what about you? What started you on this journey about of discovery about the identity of Israel? I believe I was at a place of crisis as it pertained to uh, my walk with God. I too come from a Pentecostal charismatic background. And I will say my background, we were more into emotion, more into feelings, into prophecy, into things that pertain to uh, gifts, but not necessarily strong in the meat of the word, right? So it, when, when you grow up in that type of environment, it's easy to, let's say, get caught up in tongues, but you're not really delving deep into what is the word actually saying. Mm -hmm. So I was in a place where I had actually, I got put out of the church. I was asked to leave and uh, I was at a place where I was either going to start my own work or start my own church or, uh, or not. And so in that season of that transition of me leaving the, the institution of where I was mm -hmm. uh, because of just conflict, you know, you, you, you want to ask questions but when you come up in an environment where you can't ask questions, mm. you, you can't touch the Lord's anointing or you just supposed to shut up and follow. Uh, if we use the concept I heard Brother Darrell talking about in one of his messages today, talking about the plantation preaching. I, I want to just touch on that a little bit. The idea of authority inside the church. You can't challenge authority. You can't question authority. And the reality is we are supposed to be people who question what we hear, right? Mm -hmm. But what, when that opportunity is taken from us, it takes our strength, it takes our stability, it takes our, it, it takes things from us. And so we as men, no, that, that, that's not good enough for us at some point. We can't be a yes man at some point. So I was stuck in that situation and in that season where I was asked to leave. Uh, and then that was a crisis for me, though. And in that crisis, I didn't have a choice but to begin to tap into what's in me. Mm -hmm. What's in me? What's in my heart? What do I really want? My entire foundation was cracked. Mm. So that was a quiet time for me very quiet. I, I wasn't doing good as it pertains to just being solid because 
my whole foundation had just been disrupted. Mm. So it was a lot of prayer, a lot of fasting, a lot of searching, very quiet and just trying to, I was really seeking God, really looking for how do I not lose everything, not lose my family, uh, not make a wrong turn. And in that, in that quest, in that search, and as I begin to study, as I was still reading, I start coming across, this is in 2018 now, I start coming across stuff like uh, Hebrews to Negroes. That was something that was out. Uh, Black Hebrews in the Bible, B-T-I-T-W, I think it, uh, th- there were individuals on YouTube that was putting out information and the yeah. type of information that they were yeah. putting out, they weren't preaching. They were just tapping into resources. Y'all look at this mm-hmm. resource. Y'all look at this resource. Look at what I found. There was one guy in particular, and then I'll stop. And I'll use his name specifically because he had a, a, a large role in, because he's big on putting out information. His name is Dante Fortin. Yeah. Uh, he has an excellent website. This Mm -hmm. not designed to put out doctrine is designed to put out information. This is what I found. Look at this source. This is what I found. You take this information, you research it, and you put the pieces of the puzzle together. I I think that's something that I noticed happening. That's good. Is that it's not trying to start a new church. No, we Mm -hmm. already got the book. Everything has already been given. Let's now do our homework. This is one thing that, and, and this will probably move us into further conversation with what I'm going to say. We know that our enemies have tried to do an excellent job of hiding information for generations. At one point, if we go back through history and, and notice how the church did, the church reserved their book into a different language that the public couldn't have access to. So the truth was hidden through language, right? That's the Roman church. (laughs) Come on. As we advance and more people were able to get access to being able to read for themselves through printing presses, what it did is it unlocked or gave access to regular people to find out where the falsehoods were. Mm -hmm. So what our enemies begin to do is change information. So we can see if we continue to look through history, every time we made a major advance, they begin to change the history to try mm-hmm. to rewrite. Let's change this. We see that exact same thing happening right now with critical race theory. Yes. They're trying to now go back and change history because too much is being exposed and they don't want to have to deal with the truth. So now they want to rewrite history. And if we're not careful, and if we go to sleep on this, we will mm-hmm. set our children's children up for another set of generations of being stuck in a place of bondage because we allow them to rewrite history and we don't challenge that. So all of this information for me is because now I have access to chase the the information. I'm looking at information. I'm not looking at doctrine no more. You you can miss me on dogma. Let's examine the information. The information speaks for itself. And, And I think this is the thing that really caused me to put my guard down from fighting against what I'm seeing to say, God, your word is true. It says yes. what it says. Yeah. I hope I didn't go too far. No, 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 you that's didn't. Good. And I'm glad that's, that's good. Um, and the reason I say that is, if, if you, uh, anybody noticed the format of this um, this broadcast, this um, discussion is I'm more of a facilitator. And the reason that it is, if you have noticed, both of the gentlemen that's with me today have been on this journey more than three years, three to four years. I'm three months in, so I'm here to learn <laughs> from these, these gentlemen right now and to ask some questions that I believe that everybody, especially uh, people of color, would want to ask. 
these gentlemen and yeah. uh, get an answer where somebody is not screaming at them on the street, if you know what I'm coming from right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Which oh, yeah. I think is doing the cause of the information that they're trying to uh, get out um, more damage than good because people want things explained to them, not shouted to them. You understand? Right. Now, uh, already the subject matter we got that we're going we're gonna to partake of today, people are going to think that you're crazy. I mean, those that are not uh, in depth in some of these studies and the scriptures that y'all probably gonna bring forth through the course of this uh, this conversation. So, uh, with with that in mind, y'all y'all already know that everything y'all gonna have to bring forth, y'all gonna have to back it up with with scripture. You're gonna have to back it up with uh, 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 sources and things like that because if you don't do it, they are ready to pounce and say that you know the information is false. Now, me myself, right. because I'm here trying to learn, uh, I myself is probably going to. Uh, in, insist of the same thing because I know that the viewers is going to insist of the same thing. But I know right. y'all up to the path, or y'all wouldn't be on this channel right now anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so now, what convinced you, brother uh, Aaron, about Israel's true identity? And I guess you can just go ahead and, and tell the people who you think they are. I think by now they probably know, but you have not really just outright said it. What convinced you about Israel's true identity? What did you see here that just sealed it? Yes, this is true. Uh, it's it's a, pl a a compounding one fact on top of another 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 fact. And and, of evidence. Exactly, that's the best way to say it. it. It's one to have one piece of information, you can find a way to skirt away from it, but mm -hmm. then when you compound it, the preponderance and it continues to come and you look at all of these different factors you can't help but say i can't argue with this information anymore right. i have to put down my dogma and eat mm -hmm. the whole role and not just my indoctrination and i think that way you said it the preponderance of evidence is clear to me that's good there. Yeah, I, I would say, and, and because I was already thinking about this as 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 uh, Brother Aaron was talking earlier, I think the most convincing proof, two convincing proofs for me, um, first is biblical prophecy. Um, that's an area I love. Yes. I've always loved biblical prophecy, right? And yes. and so again, I saw certain things being presented that were supposed to be Bible prophecy that historically didn't add up. Um, the scriptures themselves are, it's the book itself is prophetic, okay? Um, so if we look at history and we look at biblical prophecy, if, if they don't gel, the problem is not with the scriptures. The problem is with what's been presented as history. And as Aaron has already alluded to, there are people who specialize in rewriting history. Okay. So I already knew that. Um, but as I began to get into biblical prophecy, I'm like, well, wait a minute. Um, Noah had a prophetic word. Abram had a prophetic word. All of these, in, I'm talking about true prophecy now. I'm not talking about... <laughs> I'm not talking about, yea, verily, the Lord thy God would say unto you today. I'm not talking about that kind of prophecy. I'm talking about actual biblical prophecy that is recorded in the scripture inspired by the prophets. Okay, so biblical prophecy. But the second piece would be DNA. Um, DNA doesn't lie. <laughs> right? You know, D DNA doesn't lie. Um, and so as I was going through and I'm hearing about this and a lot of the same individuals that, that Aaron was influenced by, I was brother Ronald Dalton, uh, Hebrews to Negroes, uh, Dante, uh, uh, pastor, uh, Stephen Darby, a lot of these individuals, I kept hearing them talking about DNA, DNA, DNA. So I went and got my DNA done. And when my DNA came back and I began to look at it, it was clear 
that my DNA did not match the DNA of hermetic groups, i.e. African. However, my DNA does match um, the, the Hebrew people, um, specifically Bantu people, and we'll, we'll probably get into some of that, the Igbus, the Yoruba, um, all of these individuals, because of the DNA marker, it doesn't change. The DNA marker of males, the Y chromosome, it does not change. So when I got this information and I began to look at it and I'm looking at biblical prophecy and I'm looking at history, I'm like, wait a minute, there's more here than meets the eye. You know, so that became, though I would say that those are the things that became the most convincing um, points to me. Um, as much as I appreciate the research and everything else that has been done, um, once I was pretty much, my eyes began to open, I could literally read scripture and see in scripture, oh, <laughs> this is talking about something totally different than what we've been told. Um, and so um, that's kind of where I'm at. And I do want to say, though I've been looking at this for, you know, for some time, I'm still learning too. <laughs> you know, so I don't have all the answers, um, but I have enough. I've had enough answered by the Lord to be convinced and convicted of the biblical truths of the true identity of Israel. And I will say that, yes, I believe that true Israel, um, many people of color, colored people, Negroes, African American, black people, whichever whichever label we've been given over the years, that many of them in the U.S., in the Caribbean, in the Bahamas, these individuals have Hebrew DNA, not African DNA. Their DNA is connected to the Hebrew people, not African people. And so I'll I'll stop there. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Can I add oh, to yeah. what he was saying? Have you heard of the Zondervan Bible Dictionary? Yes. <laughs> One of the things that Zondervan point out, and, and this is an example, an excellent example of how we move the goalposts, right? So Zondervan put out information in his in his uh, Bible Dictionary that says mm -hmm. that it, it says that Ham is the father of black people. Mm -hmm. But he's not the father of the Negro. Of the Negro. So now that we're waking up and this is coming to light, we have mm -hmm. that as a source that we use. The goalpost is now being moved to say this is now not a, uh, a legitimate source to use. They want to debunk mm -hmm. the history. And, and this right. is what we're, we're seeing happen a lot of times as we pull up information and, and these breadcrumbs are left. Because remember, yes. if we go to 1700s, mm -hmm. we weren't even able to read during that time. If we go back to the 1600s now, when we are being separated from our parents, mm -hmm. husbands and wives are being separated Children are being separated, given to slave owners and slave masters. The entire family structure is being separated. How can you have a sense of where you come from? How right. can you know who your parents are? How can you know what your, your, your heritage is? It's impossible to know those things. Prior, right. bef before the Atlantic slave trade started, there can be a, a system of understanding history because they had been separated to the degree that the Atlantic right. slave trade brought on our people. So right. the idea, how can you say you're lost? How can you say you forgot who you are? How can you know who you are when you don't even know who your parents are? Right. How can exactly. you know who you are when you're being made to speak language that you don't know? That your mm -hmm. parents don't know. It's a foreign right. land, a foreign territory. How can you hold on to your history 
Your history mm-hmm. is taken from you and given by your oppressor, a new history. This, we, we see that with the movie, your name is Kunta. No, your name is Toby. Right. No, my name is, my name is Toby. No, it ain't. My name is Kunta. <laughs> we, right. see, we see the history. And if we right. don't embrace these things and call it, this is our, this is what happened, then mm-hmm. we will allow our oppressor or our oppressor's doctrine to mm-hmm. continue to permeate our understanding. So we, it'll cause us to reject what history says. Right. So what we're supposed to do is allow history to validate scripture. Mm -hmm. And when it doesn't match, when it doesn't match, we have to then investigate which one is right, which one is wrong. Right. Right. History wants history. Even if we don't like it, history is going to tell what happened. (laughs) You don't have to like it. (laughs) Right. But if we turn around and change doctrine now, hmm, that's where we got a real problem. And according to scripture, we can see, for example, if I add scripture in there, look at Revelations chapter two and nine and -hmm. Revelations chapter three and nine, the scripture let us know God has a people, but he also, there is another people who have taken on the identity of his chosen people. And there is a controversy there. And God is saying, I am going to, cause those who say they are Jews and are not, I'm going to cause those individuals to come bow before you and know that I have loved you. Right. The fact that the scripture declares that the ones who are perpetrating, I'm going to make them bow at your feet. You don't have to do nothing about this. You don't have to manipulate it. You don't have, it's prophecy. This is going to happen right now. We are, fighting for our existence, our identity. We're trying to fight and prove that we're not crazy when the power structure is already aligned against us. Our enemies rule. Right, right. And because our enemies rule in this season, they have the ability to change things. Mm -hmm. They have the ability to inflict harm by us speaking out and telling these truths, but the Mm -hmm. prophecy, the word has already been declared. God is going to cause them to come and bow at our feet. And and this is what he said. And they're going to know that I have loved you. Right. We have to be able to embrace scripture like that and just say, it is what it is. I'm not trying to be an enemy with anybody. (laughs) I'm supposed to love everybody, but scripture is clear. We have mm-hmm. enemies and our enemies are sworn enemies. They're not going to love us regardless right. of how much we try to embrace them. Our enemies teeth are already set on edge against us, not because mm-hmm. of what we've done, but because we've been chosen. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, I rest. There was, yeah. Th- there was a question asked. I, I just want to say this and then Pat, you, you, you got it, but Um, I was talking to a sister earlier today and we were talking about some things. And one of the questions that is often raised to people who are who are coming into this understanding is, well, why is your identity so important? Right. And the response is this. You're actually asking the wrong question. The question shouldn't be, why is our identity so important to us? The the real question is, why have people gone to such lengths to keep our identity hidden? That's the question. And so, you know, so so obviously identity uh, comes into the equation Uh, of people who don't know their identity. They'll be given an identity and they will live it out. Um, but a people who have their identity will walk in the reality of that identity. And that's the only way they can, uh, they can fulfill their prophetic destiny. And because we're talking about, we're talking about prophetic destiny here. Um, we're just not talking about trying to prove a point 
to make black people feel good. We're, we're talking about the necessity of really understanding who we are so that we can fulfill our prophetic destiny when it comes to the, the, the outworking of the, the plan and the purpose of God that was set way back then. And it's still playing itself out. This is why I say prophecy is key. Prophecy is key. Um, and let me say this, as I'm listening to you two guys discuss and talk uh, about uh, everything that we that talked about thus far, I, I want to make it clear to the viewer that this is not a black against white thing. This ain't about mm -hmm. people hating white people or loving black people to the extreme over white people. This is about right. a truth versus a lie thing, a information versus misinformation thing. Yes. Right? The Bible says... Uh, uh, you know, let every man be a liar and God be true. Scripture is truth. Okay. Period. Prophecy <laughs> is truth. God does not lie. God cannot lie. Okay. So right. the whole purpose of this broadcast of this gathering is to see if we can uh, find the truth in the scriptures and in history and in, in this case, DNA, since he brought that into the equation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And cash out what is true. Okay. Right. As a, uh, a, a Christian, if you're a Christian out there or just a, a, a person who uh, walk in the face of the earth, everybody, who, you know, in, in my uh, personal opinion, should want to know what is true and what mm -hmm. is error or a lie. The difference between a lie and an error is error is a mistake. A lie is on purpose. So I don't know which way. Now, there's some people out there spreading lies and there's some people simply in right. error. You know, so there's right. both of them out there. Right. So <clears throat> what we try to do is get the lies and errors on one side and, and, and weed them out and get the truth to the surface, okay? And there's, right. there's nothing wrong with that endeavor. And with that being said, let me also say this, you know, I, I, I'm gonna try to simplify for the people that's listening. Uh, somebody mentioned uh, American uh, people of color, American blacks, and I believe it was Brother Darrell, not every American black is Israel. Right. But the majority of American blacks are Israel. Let's go to Africa. Not every African is not Israel, but the majority of Africans is not Israel. Did, did I state that correctly, Brother Darrell? Mm -hmm. All, yeah. right. yeah. All right. Yeah. So, so with that being in mind, uh, Brother Darrell, starting with Sham, Ham, and Japheth, right? Give us a summary. You know, go down the line and then take us to the uh, the American blacks and uh, who are we the descendant of, and how do we, you know, how to if if we had a family tree going down. How do we get here? And you come to the conclusion that we are, for the most part, Israel. <clears throat> okay. If we start with Noah, right? Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, Japheth. Um, and I have to go back to the, to the quote that Aaron mentioned about um, Zondervan, right? Zondervan is not uh, African-American. He's not a person of color. He, he's a noted, reputable scholar. OK, Zondervan. And he made the statement that Ham is the father of uh, people of color, but not the Negro. So why did he need to say not the Negro? Because even he realized that the Negro, those who are called Negro, they are they're not hermetic. They're not descended from Ham. They're descended from Abraham. From Abram. So let me back up, or from Shem. So let me back up. Um, Shem, Ham, Japheth, all the sons of Noah after the flood. They populated what we know as the world. Shem, Ham, Japheth. Just a simple look at the geography. <laughs> Right. This is not now. This part is not rocket science. Y'all know me, right? This is not rocket science. Um, they're they're set in the some people would say the Mediterranean, some people would say the Middle East, some people would say a lot of things, except the continent of Africa. Right? They'll rule that out. But Shem, through who we get Eber, who was the father of Abraham, these individuals 
they brought forth uh, uh, people groups such as the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Jebusites. History tells us, geography tells us, archaeology tells us, these were, DNA tells us, these were people of color. Ham populated the, the, the groups of uh, people, let's say the, the, the African groups, um, the scripture list. Well, let's just go to, uh, real quick. If we look at Genesis chapter six, um, where is that at Genesis six, or do I want to go further in Genesis? Well, let's, let's go a little further. Um, if we go to Genesis chapter nine, um, and I'm going to read at verse 18. It says, the sons of Noah who went out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the whole earth was people. Okay, so we have Shem, we have Ham, and Japheth. But the scripture goes further and actually lists the descendants of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So again, if we just read, you know, we if we would just go back and just read what's there, it, it'll help us understand. So he says, uh, Genesis 10, Shem, Ham, Japheth, children were born to them after the flood. And I'm sure we'll come back to what happened after the flood in one of the conversations. Uh, Sendus of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, Tyrus, descendants of Gomer, Askenaz, and we'll come back to Askenaz, and who fathered, well, we'll come back to it, Askenaz, Ripta, Togomar, the descendants of Javan, Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, Rodinim. From these, the coastland peoples spread. Now, King James says it a different way. King James says, from these, I believe is how it's worded, the, they populated the coastland or the isles of the Gentiles. Now, this raises a whole other issue when we move into New Covenant. So it's Japheth's descendants who populated the islands of the Gentiles. So if we want to know who the true Gentiles are, they're descendants of Japheth. Okay, so that's, that's that one. So it says the descendants of Ham... Cush, Cushite, Egypt, put Canaan. Okay, so we, we know what area they were in. Those are your, what we would call African people today. They're descendants of Ham. Egypt or Mishraim, Cush, Cushites, put Libyans, Canaan, Canaanites. Okay, Havila, Zapta, Rama, Sabate, the descendants of Rama, Sheba. Y'all heard about the Queen of Sheba, right? Okay, that's that's where she came from. So she don't look like Elizabeth Taylor. I'm just mm -hmm. saying. Okay, I'm I'm just saying. That's misinformation. Cush becomes the father of Nimrod. Now we all know about Nimrod, the mighty hunter, <laughs> right? Nimrod was a person of color. Now, mind you, we're still dealing with hermetic people. We're not talking about Shemites yet. We're, we're still talking about people of color. All right. So Cush becomes the father. Beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, all of them in the land of Shinar. From that land, he went into Assyria. So even the Assyrian people were originally people of color. Right? I'm, I'm just reading what's here. Um, he built Nineveh, Rehoboth, Ur, Kala, and Rezin, between Nineveh and Kala. That is the great city. Egypt became the father of Ludum, Ananim, Lahabin, etc., of which the Philistines come. So now we have the Philistines <laughs> who, who are also people, people of color. <laughs> See, something's going on here. This is the region that the biblical narrative is playing out, right? Okay, now let's go 
Canaan became the father of Zidon. Uh, from him, we get the Jebusites, Amorites, Girgashites, Hivites, Archites, Sinai. You know, all of the ites that you read about in the Old Covenant, <laughs> they're descended from who? Canaan. Who's descended from who? Ham. Who's the father of who? People of color. So thus far, what we have is a group of Gentiles, Japheth's kids, who populated the isles and the coastlands of who's referred to as Gentiles. Then we have the Hermetic group who populate what? The area in scripture where the old covenant story is actually playing itself out. Okay. So let's get to Shem. Shem was the father of all the children of Eber, the elder brother of Japheth. Children were born, the descendants of Shem, Elam, Ashur, Arpashat, Lud, Aram, the descendants of Aram, and he goes on and on. To Eber were born two sons. The name of the one was Pelik, for in his days the earth was divided. His brother was named Joktan. It goes down and it traces, and from Eber, or from Shem, comes Eber, who is the father of Abram. Now, when we look at scripture, and this is this, this is where we have to put on our, our thinking caps and our understanding of history. When we look at how the Old Testament played out, you will find Abraham, you will find Isaac, you will find Jacob, all marrying people who were descended from Ham. Yes. All right. So now we yes. have the Semitic people who are always interacting with the Hamites. They could blend in. Why? Because they were people of color. So um, just, just a casual reading of what we have in scripture without going any further than that, what we already know is the Shemites and the Hamites dwelt in the same region. They interacted, they intermarried, and they looked alike. That's why when Israel, whenever they got into trouble and stuff started happening, where did they go? They into went Egypt. down into, into Egypt. Egypt. Why? Yes. Because th they were grouped together. So, yes. so, well, 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 so, so how does that affect people of, of color today in America, how do we get black folk or how do we get African-American or color people um, being descendants of Abraham from that? All we've got to do is read, trace the ge genealogy, see the biblical narrative play itself out and what we will begin to understand. Let me use a different term. The Hebrew people were people of color. This was before there was even an Israelite. The Hebrew people were people of color. That's, that's where I get this Shem, Hem, Japheth. I know who the Gentiles are because the scripture tells me who they are. They're the descendants of Japheth. But we're told that if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. So this is obviously not what Paul was referring to when Paul was talking about the Jew-Gentile controversy, but it's because we lack an understanding of the historicity of the genealogies that create this, this vacuum to where people can come in and say, well, you know, Black people, you know you, you, know you Negroes are descendants of uh, Ham, and there was a Hermetic curse. There was no Hermetic curse. Canaan, who was one of four, was cursed, not Ham. So probably didn't answer your question, but I gave it my best shot. <laughs> Actually, you walked good, pretty good, uh, Brother Aaron. I don't know if you got something to add to that, but I do. Let's, let's add this. Let's add more scripture now to the conversation about the Shemites. Right. So mm -hmm. now let's go to Moses. When when Moses is given the command to go to Pharaoh, when mm -hmm. when God is trying to establish Moses as mm -hmm. getting his confidence, he said, Moses, take your hand, put your hand inside your bosom. <laughs> right. When Moses pulled his hand out of his bosom, the description is. His hand is white as snow, right? Mm -hmm. 
So how could it be that that's a difference if he's already a Caucasian man? Right. It, it has to be something that's so dramatically different that not only will get his attention, but will also get Pharaoh's attention because this mm-hmm. is unusual. Yes. We got to we got to see the miracle in all of this. He takes mm-hmm. Moses from his natural state, converts and cause something else to happen that mesmerize all that are watching for the purpose of getting his attention. And then he says, OK, now, Moses, now put your hand back in your bosom. He pulls yep. it out. It's back the original color, just like the rest of his flesh. Right. Right. Then he goes on to deal with Miriam, Moses' sister. When she talks about uh, Moses's wife, who was a, a woman of color, we absolutely know that. It's not that mm-hmm. he was white. She was of a different tribe right. from them. So the mm-hmm. distinction is not that they being racist as it pertains to the color of their skin. They're just bringing out the fact that they are a different tribe of people. Mm-hmm. So when God begins to deal with Miriam, she get cursed with leprosy and the scripture mm-hmm. says she become white as snow. How is it that if she's already a Caucasian woman, how was it now that she's leprous, white as snow, and it's not something to be disdained? Right. Now let's look at all through the instructions that were given to the Levites when someone had become leprous. How were the Levites given instructions to identify and look at the symptoms of these individuals because they've become white? That was not their original color. Right. So this is all dealing with the same group of people that they are a naturally people of, of color. They're, they're melanated people, but the curse is the melanin is removed. Right. That's good. Well, Can I add are, one other thing? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Finish your thought. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm here to be the, the moderator and, and, and to, uh, as, as a person that's listening, and I'm sitting there thinking what a person would say uh, to that. If it was me and I would do, do this, I would say a white person doesn't look like that. They, you know, they white, but they not this white. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me, let me, let me. Go ahead. No, no, I follow exactly what you're saying. So let me throw something else in, in dealing with Moses. Um, because I agree 100% with Brother Aaron. But listen, have we established that the Egyptians were people of color? Because you know that there are people today who say that the Egyptians aren't right. are people of color either, right? But can we, can we at least establish that the Egyptians were people of color who descended from Ham based on the scriptures? Uh, I mean, yes, I, I agree. I agree. Yes, but I don't know if we walk right. through it on the broadcast, but yeah, I, I know the right. thing. Yeah, yeah, just for just for the sake of conversation here. Right. So we can agree that um Egyptians were descendants of Ham, who everybody acknowledges was colored, was melanated. Right. All right. right. All right. In Exodus chapter two, y'all will remember this. Moses had fleed Egypt, right? And he went to Midian. Excellent. The Midianites. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> Midianites, okay? And this is what happens. Verse 17. It says, the, 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 the Moses fled from Pharaoh, settled in the land of Midian, sat down by a well. The priest of Midian had seven daughters, they came to draw water and fill the troughs to water their father's flock. But some shepherds came and drove them away. Moses got up, came to their defense, and watered their flock. When they returned to their father, Ruel, he said, how is it that you have come back so soon? They said, now, now, now watch this. An Egyptian. An Egyptian <laughs> helped us against the shepherds he even drew water for us and watered the flock. He said, well, where is he? So Zipporah, you know, ended up 
uh, uh, going to get him. Moses actually ended up marrying Zipporah, had children by Zipporah, who was a Midianite, but they thought Moses was an Egyptian. Well, if the Egyptians were people of color and they mistook Moses for a person of color, how could they think Moses was an Egyptian? And people say, oh, it's because of the way he was dressed. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> if, 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 if you take one of my Caucasian <laughs> brothers today and dress him up in typical African-American or Negro apparel, you are not going to mistake him for a Negro. That's, 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 a, that's a Caucasian brother who likes to dress like we do. They mistook Moses for an Egyptian. The same thing happened to Paul. They thought Paul was an Egyptian. And we've established e Egyptians were descended from Ham, who everybody acknowledges fathered all of the melanated people. So the internal witness of the scriptures themselves point to these individuals being people of color. That's very good. Maybe I'm reading wrong, or maybe I'm interpreting wrong, but I thought I was just reading. <laughs> no need to interpret, right? Right. Um, so, so, so this becomes the foundation um, when we go back. See, we have to go back to the beginning, you know, go back and let's, let's trace this stuff, not to mention, <laughs> do I want to go? I might as well. Not to mention, Man's body itself was formed from the dust of the earth. You ever see the color of dirt? <laughs> it you wasn't sand. Clay, you clay, you <laughs> and, and that's what people say. Well, you got red clay. You got this kind of clay. You got no. They he no. He, man's body was formed from the dust of the earth in that area. So, you know, we, 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 we can come up with a lot of different uh, intellectual, uh, philosophical, and logical ways to explain away what the scriptures make real plain. Um, but you, you, you cannot explain how Moses <laughs> was mistaken for an Egyptian. You can't do that. So they make Egyptians Caucasian. They say, well, Egyptians are Caucasian. But there you go. I don't know you. Uh, you you very well misinformed, brother. I mean, you must not have seen the Ten Commandments of Charleston history. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I've, oh no! I've seen it. I'm I, sorry. I've seen. I've seen the movie, and we know who runs the music, or we know who runs the movie industry. But we'll get to that. But anyway. Okay. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is fine. If, for the most part, if American blacks or Israel or the Hebrews, okay, when and why did they leave the Middle East? Why did they leave the homeland? If you know, and come around, how did you know how how we get over here? They didn't leave by choice. It's prophecy had to be fulfilled. Not one jot or one tittle is going to by any means pass away to all be fulfilled. So it had already been declared that we would be scattered throughout the whole earth. And that, mm -hmm. whole, that whole earth scattering did not happen until after we crucified the Messiah, which means the whole earth scattering did not happen during Old Testament times. Right. We went to different locations, yes, mm -hmm. but we did not get scattered throughout the whole earth until right. we or our parents had said, crucify him, give us Barabbas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so if you think about it, even though Isaiah prophesied that one will come and he will be bruised for our iniquity and he will uh, be taking stripes on his stripes will be for our healing. We got those scriptures of his coming in Isaiah, but we mm -hmm. didn't experience it until what we call the New Testament. So what, one of the things that I think has been a major, uh, a major disaster or setback 
for the church is to separate two covenants, make it two separate things and it not being married together as one book. I love if it. we see it as one book, then you can see the whole story and not yes. separate it. So the idea uh, of the, the scripture talks about how Jesus was slain from the foundation of the world. So when we understand that, then we can see how the beginning, the shadow that came initially, look mm -hmm. at how the, the blood of the goats and the bulls never had the power to right. satisfy the debt. That was never the intent. That was just the season of the shadow. The sun was beginning to rise. But it was always the plan that Christ's blood will be that that satisfied the debt. That didn't start in the New Testament, so it did away with the Old Testament. Now we got something new, so we don't need what was already spoken. No, right. the truth is he declared the end from the beginning. So if you want to know what's in the end, you don't go to the end of the book to find out. It's established from the beginning. So you yes. can't get rid of the front of the book. It's sealed. When Jesus said it's finished, that means everything that needed to be done was finished as it pertained to the entire story. Mm -hmm. So when we look at Revelation, John is not getting the first vision of what the end is going to look like. He's just right. reiterating what Isaiah and Ezekiel and Zechariah and all the Old Testament prophets had art and Daniel had already spoken. He was right. just getting a further revelation to tie the books together. It's one book. And right. so when, when we see when we see it from that perspective, it allow us to go. No, we can't stay here and say, no, I'm just a New Testament believer. We as New Testament believers have to line our understanding up with the covenant that was made with the house of Israel and the right. house of Judah. Correct. Because there is no Christianity separated from the covenant that he made with a people. That's why it's important to know who Israel is, because we have to plug into the tree. Yes. You get it? Even if we think we are grafted in, when we're grafted in, we're this is something you have to look at. In grafting, in grafting, if you take a tree that already exists, that's called this tree, an apple tree. Mm -hmm. If the scripture says some of the branches of the apple tree are cut off and then mm -hmm. some wild olives are put on to the tree, when those wild olives are put on, do those olives or do the entire tree become an olive tree? Mm -mm. It don't. The mm -mm. olive tree begins to produce olives because it's connected to the root. It don't change the entire structure of the tree. It has its life source from the root of the tree. That's good. But, but it don't change the tree. The tree is still producing apples like it was created to. He just mm -hmm. engrafted another fruit on. Notice how when we look in uh, the, the design that, that God made in the kingdom, he talked about there are trees that bear many manner of fruit all at mm -hmm. the same time. One tree bearing several different fruits. That is the, the, the wisdom and the uh, awesomeness of our God to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. That's not something that's done naturally. So when we see that the Gentiles were grafted into the tree, they're grafted into the covenant that God made with his people. That's and in right, order for it. them to partake, they have to partake in the covenant that he made with his people, not come in and change the whole tree. Now we got a whole olive tree and the apple tree has been cut down. You can't right. replace the tree. You right. become a part of the tree that exists. So you celebrate in the fact that you have life because the root supports you. You don't get mm -hmm. to dictate to the apple tree what they're going to do. But that's what we see with Christianity today. That's exactly. why there's such a struggle in how we identify as Christians. Oh, no, I'm not Israel. I'm, I'm, I'm just a Christian believer. There's no separation. <laughs> right. If you have embraced the faith, then you are Israel because right. he only made a covenant with one people. 
Anybody who's going to be a part of that people are going to embrace the covenant that he made. Mm -hmm. So you don't have a choice but to love your neighbor as yourself. You're forced Mm -hmm. to. You're right. forced to love your neighbor, even if y'all don't look alike. One is an olive, one is an apple. They're mm-hmm. different, but they're forced to love each other, to receive from the same root supply that's given both of them life. Right. But we don't hey, see uh, that inside the church. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah. What, 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 he, what he's referring to for the, the onlooker or the viewer is Romans uh, chapter 11. He's talking about the olive tree. Uh, being illustrated there. Uh, also, you said something, and I, you didn't you didn't finish. In, in my opinion, you talked about Pilate when he crucified cross, Jesus, all right? And the, the, you know, the people said crucify him. Well, he finished that. He said, well, well you know, what about uh, what about him? What about Jesus? He said, they said, let his blood be on us and our children, all right? Bingo. Mm-hmm. That's what you didn't say, <laughs> and I think that's very important mm-hmm. that the people it said, is. let his blood be on us and our children. Well, what is that? Future generation. You understand? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, right. You know, yeah. So anyway, I thought that was yeah. very important, but you yeah. say that second half. <laughs> go, go ahead, brother. Yeah. No, I was gonna say I just I just wanted to 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 add something to that. First, mm-hmm. first I want to say this. Um we are not we are not promoting a message that says only black people can be saved. Don't t- don't don't think that's what we're saying. That's not what we're saying. Not at all. What we are what we are saying is there's a prophetic destiny on uh, the seed of Abraham, and so we can yes. trace the seed of Abraham. Paul makes it clear: if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So all of this, even even those of Israel that were broken off or blinded or hardened they have to be grafted back in as well, but they have to be grafted in through coming into a knowledge of, of Christ. Now, this is not the Christ of, of, you know, that we've created. We've kind of created a different Jesus to go along with our Christian narrative. That's, that's not what Paul is establishing. Um, the other thing that I want to point out, if, 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 if it can come back to my remembrance, uh, because Pat was making a statement about something, um, and, and I, I'll have to come back to it because it kind of went off when I started talking about the thing about Paul. Um, Just now? Please don't think, yeah, you were saying something and it Who's triggered surprised? something. Uh, no, it was, it, it, was, it was before that, or, or Aaron was saying something. Um, and it, it just it just went away. It, it'll come back and then and then I'll bring it up at that point. Um, but the one thing I do want I, I do want to stress is that we're not saying um, because I understand that there are groups who teach, you know, white people can't be saved. White people are cursed and on and on and on. That, that That's not what we're saying. Um, God's plan and God's purpose is to save all mankind. OK, OK. It just so happens that he has a chosen people. Um, yes. and, and we have to be clear on who that chosen people is so that they can fulfill their prophetic destiny to reach the rest of the world with the gospel. That's, that's you know, that's what, that's all we're saying. That's, well, I know that's all I'm saying. Um, and, I, and I think that my brothers would concur with that. So I don't Absolutely. want anybody to get the wrong idea um, about what we're talking about. I don't want anybody to do that. Yeah, let me also go ahead. Go ahead. Let me also be clear. I am saying the same thing that Brother Daryl is saying. All, salvation is available to all who yes. comes and submit to the word of God regardless of what you look like. If you embrace the faith, you embrace the instruction, the the instruction, if you love me, keep my commandments. Anybody who follow those instructions can have salvation. Yes. It's it's not isolated. It's not, I don't, even if I said I'm Israel, as Israel, that doesn't give me access to salvation just because I can trace my bloodline to yes. a Hebrew. Very, very important. That does not, that does not give me access. My DNA won't save me. Right. My affiliation with a church denomination 
don't save me. It's my submission to the word of God and the following of his instructions that will give me access. So it's one thing to have faith, but then I got to turn around and put my faith in action. So my faith will produce works of righteousness and those works of righteousness will be evident that the fruit of the spirit is present and is producing that life in me, which gives me access to the kingdom. That's That's for all of us. That's good. The thought came back. So can I throw it out before, (laughs) before it leaves me again? All right. The question that, yeah, the question that you asked was, well, if, 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 if many people of color are Israel, are, are, are true Hebrews, Israelites, when did we leave the Middle East? It's a great question. But here's the thing. Up until probably 1600s, 1700s, there was no notion of an area called the Middle East. That's a construction that supports a narrative of another people group. So we talk about the Middle East. That that, that was unheard of. Even down through church history, there was no reference to a place called the Middle East. That's designed to support a narrative um, about a particular people group and other people groups, as well as to hide the identity of another people group, the Middle East, <laughs> you know, and, and I just wanted to bring that up and, and we'll probably touch on some things about that a little later when we talk about the folk that's actually in Israel now, but um, the Middle East, there, there, there was no understanding about, you know, you, you'll read about a Mediterranean, you'll read about Ethiopia, you'll read about Kush, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll read about all of these geographic areas in the scripture, old and new. What you won't find is any notion of a place called the Middle East. That's, that's just bad eschatology. Eschatology is the study of last things. That's bad eschatology. So I wanted to clear, clarify that. So, you know, as Aaron pointed out, um, Israel proper, or, or let's say Judah proper, um, they left Jerusalem and really migrated. Between the crucifixion, closer to AD 70 when the temple was destroyed and they were being pursued by Rome. Where did they go? (laughs) They did not go to Europe. They went south. They went down into Egypt. And because they're fleeing, they went further into Africa, ended up in the sub-Saharan Africa area, primarily around the Horn of Africa, which, you know, that's, oh boy, that's where the slaves were taken from. The slaves were only taken from one part of Africa, and that's the West Coast of Africa, around Cameroon, uh, you know, all of that area there. Ben, Togo, St. Thomas. Even, exactly, even older maps. Oh boy, (laughs) even older maps. There are maps from the 15, 16, 1700s that cartographers, those that were doing maps, um, actually, you know, mapped out. There's an area in Africa called Negro Land. We... (laughs) It's literally called Negro land and and it's a particular region. And this is where even I believe it was uh, Henry Kissinger. Y'all remember Henry Kissinger? Um, He made the statement. He said, hey, he said the Bantu people and the Igbo people, that's what they were called. They're actually wandering Jews. And he's talking about people of color. So, again, this is not information that we're just kind of coming up with to try to prove a black power point. This is documented historical testimony, not just from from people of color. This is testimony from Europeans and Ashkenazi Jews and everybody else who was saying, hey, these people here, 
that we got from Negro land down around Niger, them folk, which is why when we came here, what was the first label that we were? Negroes. Anybody remember? Negroes. Why did they call them Negro? Because they was from Negro land, <laughs> which was in Africa. That's how we ended up in that region of Africa. We were fleeing from the Roman persecution after AD 70, and we migrated south as we all as as we always did, even in the Old Testament scriptures. They went south. They did not go north into the Caucasus Mountains. That's where Japheth's kids ended up. Okay, we uh we touched on Romans 11 a little bit kind of earlier than I wanted to. But I'm going to go ahead and touch on something else we kind of touched on, too, a little bit mm -hmm. earlier than I do. But, hey, whatever the conversation goes. So I'm going to jump down and ask uh, one of the questions I wanted to say for later, because we, 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 we're tap dancing all over it. If the true mm -hmm. Gentiles, which is if <laughs> the true Gentiles ain't us, <laughs> that means the true Gentiles is somebody else. <laughs> mm -hmm. if they mm -hmm. can be saved through the Hebrews. Okay, well, I can say through the, if they can be saved, uh, why is knowing our identity so important if everybody can be saved the same way? And I'm going to say through Christ Jesus, right? Why is knowing, and Brother Darrell kind of touched on that a little bit earlier as well, but y'all kind of uh, tap dancing on two of the different things. One, why is our, our identity important? And two, if the Gentiles can be saved, uh, you know, some people are saying, well, why is this whole conversation relevant? Hey, in the end, just trust in Jesus and, you know, so can I point fact, go ahead. I wanted to start asking her, uh, let, let, let's use again what Brother Daryl has said earlier. Mm -hmm. Why is it important? Because of the prophecies that have already been declared. So mm -hmm. what has been pronounced on the Gentiles? Judgment has been pronounced on the Gentiles, mm -hmm. right? So when we look at how the even during Armageddon, the names, those original names that he talked about in Genesis chapter 10 are named mm -hmm. among the nations of Gentiles that are going to come together in a confederacy to fight against Christ at his mm -hmm. return. The nation of the Gentiles. If we look at Luke chapter 21, Luke talks about mm -hmm. how that that. Israel or Judah is going to be scattered into mm -hmm. all the earth and mm -hmm. that Jerusalem will be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That will mm -hmm. let us know that in this season, the Gentiles still rule. Mm -hmm. This is their kingdom right now. So as we look out at the nations of the world, we see the influence of the Gentiles everywhere, according right. to scripture. If we go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28, look at verse 46, verse 46, let us know that these signs or all of these curses shall be a sign upon Israel forever. Mm -hmm. So now what you have to say is since we know that there's a controversy. Since we know yeah. now that there is an issue, we have mm -hmm. to look at scripture and let scripture declare who was who, right? Yeah. So the scripture declares that Israel is going to be the tail and not the head. That's the curse. Mm -hmm. The scripture mm -hmm. declares that uh, Israel is going to be the borrower and not the lender. The scripture, right. the, the curse declares that everywhere Israel go, Israel is going to be at the place of the least. Mm -hmm. That is the curse or the sign that God put upon Israel forever. So if we will remain true to the scripture, we have a way that we can find out who was who. Let's just follow the scripture. Whereas right. the scripture let us know that the Gentiles are going to be in the place of rule right now until their mm -hmm. time is ended. So you can't be both the richest people in the world and the people who have the curse upon them at the same time. Something mm -hmm. is wrong. Something don't line up. So we right. have a narrative in the earth that the Jews are the richest people in the earth, the richest people in the world. Hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yes, it is a narrative. But according mm -hmm. to scripture, the curse 
is supposed to be upon Israel as a sign right now. And, and this is what we have to use to begin to gauge. Let's look at what the scriptures say. Let's let the scripture be the judge. And at the end, according to our read in Revelation, God is going to cause those enemies to come and bow. Yeah. Not because we're special, but because he has already written his scripture. He's already written his word and his word has to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So what we are going to witness as we continue to move forward is we are going to see in a, a rise in the frustration of the Gentile powers, the more they're that they feel like their time is coming to an end. They are going to stir up or ratchet up the pressure in order to fight against the people of God because they don't want to lose the place of preeminence that they have presently. We can't right. argue with that. That's just the scripture. Right. And as long as we are paying attention to what the scriptures say, as long as we're breaking away from indoctrination, breaking away from the plantation preaching that we've heard for 400 years, as long as mm -hmm. we're breaking away from those things and we're saying, I'm tired of indoctrination, I want the truth. Mm -hmm. Let's go back and start looking at the truth of scripture because of the time. If the time really is that short, then we should see these things starting to move into position. Mm -hmm. I, I think that that is, is the reality. Is it, Yes. So, so for us, this is the way Israel should see it. I have no hope unless I embrace the plan of salvation that God made for me. Right. And as also as a Gentile, judgment has been pronounced on the Gentiles as well. They have no hope unless they embrace the plan of salvation that's been made for mm -hmm. them. See, yes. we all don't have a choice but to line ourselves up with the plan that the Redeemer made. His own blood was shed to deliver both of us from the, the the judgment that's been pronounced on each of us. So right. the judge, uh, during the time of the what we call the great tribulation, that mm. is the wrath that God is pouring out on the Gentiles because of what they've done to Israel. Right. But there is no escape for Israel if they continue to reject the Messiah. Right. So no one is exempted from the plan of God. You just have to recognize who you are, what role you play, and line yourself up with the word of God, with the will of God. Right. Exactly. Go ahead, Brother Darrell. Yeah, I, I was just going to say the springboard off of that because I keep referring back to the thing about prophecy, right? The book of Hosea, everybody's familiar with the prophet Hosea, right? I want to read something. Um in Hosea chapter one, the word of the Lord came to Hosea in the days of King Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah of Judah, and in the days of King Jeroboam, son of Joash of Israel. And I do a lot of teaching and I talk a lot about the two houses of Israel. And a lot of people don't connect that dot between the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And I'm not going to go into all of it. But in the book of Hosea, it said the Lord spoke to Hosea and said, go take yourself a wife of whoredom. So he takes this wife. She ends up having two kids, right? But what I want to point out is this, verse six. This is why identity is important. He says this, she conceived again, bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, name her Lo Ruhamah, for I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them, but I will have pity on the house of Judah and I will save them by the Lord their God. I will not save them by bow or by sword or by war or by horses or by horsemen. When she had weaned Lo Ruhamah, she conceived and bore a son and then said, name Lo I'm a, for you are not my people and I am not your God. And God talks about how he's going to scatter this seed. He's going to, in, in chapter two, said, I'm going to sow her unto me in the earth. I'll have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them, which were not my people, 
you are my people, and they will say, you are my God. And this way it gets into, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, we take that, and I've heard it preached. I've preached it. <laughs> I've taught it, you know, it, well, you know with, with, within the church about God. God said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The reason you're being destroyed, you don't have a knowledge of the tithe. You don't have a knowledge of this. You don't have a knowledge of that. You don't have... No, this is talking about something totally different. This, this is actually talking about you don't have a knowledge, number one, of who you are. You don't have a knowledge of the covenant that I gave your fathers. This is what Hosea is talking about, right? God said, yeah, uh, that's what I'm going to do. But he says his people went to backsliding from him, though they called them to the most high, none at all would exalt him. So God begins to speak to the prophets about this regathering of the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Israel has been scattered. Judah has been scattered. But in the end of time, in the last days, in the time of the end, God said, I'm going to regather them. So they, they're going to get their identity back. We see Paul Picking up on this theme, he said, you know, where it was said, you are not my people, there they shall be called the sons of God. And we don't know what to do with those scriptures. We don't know what to do with the scriptures because we don't understand the foundation of which the ministry of the Apostle Paul went forth. Even Jesus said, I have come to seek and to save the lost, right? But he also said... I have only come for the lost sheep of what? The house of Israel. Yes. So what, what, what do we do with all of these scriptures? You know, Paul talks about the fullness of the Gentiles. Well, we've acknowledged who the gent. you know, we've seen from scripture who's being called Gentiles, right? But we just say, oh, the fullness of the Gentiles, that's when, that's that's the church being, you know, built so the church can get raptured and then God's going to turn back to Israel and fulfill this covenant of promise, false narrative. This is not what Paul is talking about. The fullness of the Gentiles, if we go back let me see who, what, let me see. Give me a minute. I think it was Jacob. It was Jacob when he blessed Joseph's sons. Y'all remember yes. that, right? Ephraim. Yes, sir. Ephraim yes. and Manasseh. Yes. Ephraim and Manasseh, watch this term, were adopted and became sons of Just, Jacob. Jacob, yeah. They're Joseph's sons born to Joseph and his wife, who, by the way, happened to be a an Egyptian, <laughs> a Hamite. So yes. now we have Ephraim and Manasseh being adopted into Israel, right? Yes. Ephraim becomes the head of the tribe. So we start reading all of this stuff about Ephraim in the scripture. Ephraim, Ephraim, who, by the way, Ephraim, the capital of the northern tribes, became known as a place, watch this, called in scripture, Samaria. This is the story of the Samaritan woman. This is prophecy playing itself out. And God said, where it was called, you are not my people. He's referring back to Hosea. There they're going to be called the children of God. Why? Because they've been brought back. God said, I'm going to regather Israel. I'm going to regather Judah. Then what I'm going to do, as Aaron pointed out, Maybe in the stick. time of the end, <clears throat> I'm going to join the two sticks together, and then I'm going to gather all nations together to the, to the battle of Armageddon in the valley of Jehoshaphat, and there I will fight for my people. See, Judgment Day has to do with what the nations have done to God's people. Yes. But that's not how we preach it in America. Rome gave us a different narrative. God is coming to take vengeance upon the nations of the earth for what they have done to his covenant people in the same way that he showed up and judged 
Egypt for what they did to his covenant people. Don't mess with God's people. So why is our identity important? <laughs> because if we don't know who we are, we really won't understand what the Bible is even talking about. 